Hey Wargamers, it's Mike from Epic Duck Studios, and this is The Epic Hobby. Today I'll be painting a Vatir Vicario for Tor Gaming's Relics. I've started by simply priming the model gray and then blasting it from above with white primer so they get a bit of a xenophil highlight and some of the edges are already sort of picked out for me. I want to give this a bit of a naturalized effect and so I'm going to be using a combination of both blue and purple to give it some variation in the ice color. I'm starting by mixing a light blue wash. By mixing light blue paint, in this case Vallejo Game Color Electric Blue with water, I'm just going to apply this over the entire model. When applying a wash like this to the entire model, it's a good idea to test out one area first and make sure it's the consistency you want. In this case, it's going on a little bit too thick. You see, I'm actually getting a very vibrant blue color and I want more of the white to show through. So I'm going to go ahead and thin the wash before I apply it to the rest of the model and then come back later and lighten this foot up. Once the wash is a good consistency, it's safe to start applying to everything. Here I'm making sure that I get it on all the surfaces as well as forcing it into the creases between the different shards of ice. Basically, I just want everything to have a nice light blue tint before I start any real detail work here. This miniature is basically an ice elemental, and any of the processes you see me using here will really work for almost any other ice type model. Ice elementals are pretty common in just about every game, and especially in Frostgrave. So you'll find this type of model in a lot of other gaming systems, and so these techniques can apply to a whole lot of different miniatures. Here I'm just dispensing a little bit of pure white, which I'll need later, but I'm going to mix a little bit of it with the light blue from earlier, just to lighten that foot up so it matches the tint of the rest of the model, because you can see it is much more blue than white. So to make the ice more interesting, I am going to use a purple wash now. Basically on the joints and these sort of outer extremities, I'm using Vallejo Game Color Hexed Lichen here, which is a sort of like a mid-tone purple. It's not too dark, it's not too light, it doesn't really have a pinkish tinge to it. This will help give it a sort of deep ocean ice kind of feel and give a little more character to the miniature. I'm making this wash especially thin because I really only want it in the crevices as opposed to all over the whole surface like the light blue was. I'm going to selectively apply it to sort of the elbow and knee areas, as well as parts of the face. It is going to tint the surfaces a little bit, and that's okay, but I do want it to pool a little bit more than I did with the blue, so that I get some kind of deeper shadows from it.
Similar to the purple wash, I'm going to mix one up using Vallejo Game Color Imperial Blue. Any dark blue will work here. Again, adding some water to thin it down, and I'm going to apply it basically to everything that wasn't purple, as well as overlapping the purple areas just a little bit so they blend together. Basically every single surface should be covered between the blue wash and the purple wash so I can make sure that there's some deep shadows on every single ice crystal. Now I'm going to grab the pure white I dispensed earlier and start dry brushing pretty much every sharp edge of this model, and there are quite a few of them. The intent is to make the edge of each crystal appear lighter than the center. Because there are so many sharp edges on this model, I don't really want to spend the time edge highlighting each and every single one of them, so dry brushing is a good quick way to get that kind of effect. With dry brushing, you'll want to have a paper towel handy, and you basically want to keep on brushing until almost no paint comes off your brush. There should be a very minimal amount of paint applying to the model when you do this, and it may be worth testing it against something like the back of your thumb or the cork your model is based on or anything of that nature. You can see here I'm mostly using the side of my brush, and I'm dragging it along the edge of the crystal so they'll grab the most color. I'm trying to mostly avoid the flat surfaces because I want to leave as much of the purple and blue showing as possible. It's important to pay attention to which direction you're dry brushing. You can see from about the wrist down, I am dry brushing in a downwards direction, but from the wrist up, I am dry brushing in the upwards direction. And that's because that's basically the way the points of the crystal go. If I ran my dry brush into the points, there's a chance it would start to splay the brush, and then the bristles wouldn't go where I expect them, may end up marring the surface with white paint. On this miniature's back, it's much harder to go in a bottom to top direction, especially where the head overlaps the back. So you can see I'm mostly going with a left to right direction with the side of my brush, so it still grabs the sharp edges, but where possible I am working from the bottom to the top of each shard, which is mostly from the shoulders backwards.
Because dry brushing leaves so little pigment behind, sometimes areas aren't as colored as you'd expect them to be. So here I'm going over the arms again with the second coat of white dry brushing, just to make sure the edges really do stand out. Now I'm going to base coat the eyes with dark green, in this case Vallejo Game Color Foul Green. The eyes are basically the only detail in this miniature that's not ice. Next, I'm going to highlight the eyes using Vallejo Game Color Livery Green. Any light green will work here. Now that the eyes are finished, I'm going to take a fine brush and a little bit of pure white paint and just start grabbing a few details to make the miniature stand out just a little bit more. Specifically, I'm going to underline each eye, highlight the teeth and a few other facial details, and then kind of pick out the very points of several of the crystal shards. There's a few areas on the model I want to draw attention to, and lightening them up from the surrounding areas is the easiest way to do that. So I'm going to be focusing on underneath each eye, the model's teeth, and basically the back of the head crest and the back of the forelimbs. Traditionally, you want to paint a model's face to be lighter than all the surrounding areas because light colors draw the viewer's eye in, and it makes it sort of the focal point to the miniature if it's lighter than all the surrounding details. Thankfully, that's very easy to achieve on this model because white highlights make perfect sense.
You can see how even after two coats of white dry brushing, a pure white highlight still really stands out. It probably helps that the blue and purple washes weren't entirely set when I began dry brushing, so the white dry brush probably picked up a little bit of tint from them. But in general, a dry brushing will be a muted version of the color you're using, simply because of how the pigment is applied. Finally, I'm going to put edge highlights around the shoulders and the head crest to help draw the eye towards the middle of the model. And that's it! The Vateater Vicario from Tor Gaming's Relics is a great looking ice elemental that paints up very quickly. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and can find a way to use it with your own miniatures. If you do follow this tutorial for anything, please let me know in the comments below because I'd love to see what you're doing. Don't forget to do something epic. Hey, thanks for watching my video! If you liked that one, why don't you check out some battle reports right over here? Or check out more epic hobby content right over here? If you really like what I'm doing and want to support my creative efforts, I really urge you to become one of my supporters on Patreon. You can find out more about that right here. Thanks for watching.